just looked at the sutram 3316 pada ruja vishas prishoghai which started the topic of the afis ghai which runs down from 3316 down to 3355 let's now take the next sutram in the ashtadhyayi kramaha ashtadhyayi sequence a sutram is 3317 which is sru sthire sru sthire this sutram applies only to one specific verbal root sru it comes in the vadi ganaha as well as in the jyotya adi ganaha and the vritti of the sutram से सरते स्थिरे कर्तरी घई स्या so here again 3467 applies saying that kartari krit meaning any krit affix unless specified otherwise is used in the sense of the agent of the action so here also ghai just like in the prayer sutram 3316 this affix is ghai in this sutram denotes the agent of the action but that agent has an adjective to him or her and it is sthire sthire means one who is stable not transient which means that the agent moves from one time frame to the next time frame without changing it stays stable so what it means is kalantarasthai which remains static through intervals of time that is what's called sthira stable now one thing to note is that this sthira is a saptam ek vachanam but here it is not a upapadam because normally what do we do we use 3192 which says tatro upapadam saptam istham and then look at the padam which is saptam yantam in the sutram and that points to the upapadam but not in this case in this case sthira is an adjective to kartari so that's why the vritti says sthire kartari not sthire upapade but sthire kartari as an adjective to the agent it qualifies the agent it puts a condition on the agent what kind of agent it should be to use this affix so let's take the example sarati kalantaram iti saraha so here derived from the verbal root srugata from the bhavadi ganaha and the derivation is straight forward we take this verbal root sru at the affix ghai by the sutram 3317 sru sthire and of course kartari krit this denotes the agent of the action it letters nyakara sit sanyabhai halantyam ghakara sit sanyabhala shakvata jite tasya lopaha nimitu the gunadesha hava sarvadhat karadhat kayo urandra paraha we get sar uh, and then atopadhaya the upadha akara gets the vridhyadesha we get sar a uh, and then sar uh, gets the pradipadika sanyabhai krit tadhita samasascha krit tadhita samasascha so basically it means the essence of something the non transient part of something the non transient transient portion so that is called saraha or essence now there is a vartikam on this sutram which extends the use of this affix gani following this verb rusru in three other meanings is vyadhi matsya baleshu cheti vaktavyam cha iti vaktavyam so the affix gani may also be used following the verb rusru to denote an agent in the meaning of disease or a species of fish matsya or strength balam examples are as follows ati saro vyadhi ati sahara is basically dysentery that which that which causes movements bowel movements dysentery is ati saraha and here really sru is what is called as antar bhavit nyarthaha atra sarati antar bhavit nyarthotra sarati which means even though the causative affix nich has not been used it is implied in the verbal root itself in this particular case so because you look at the vigra vakyam it says ati sarayati so rizradikam atishayena sarayati iti arthaha rizradikam atishayena sarayati iti arthaha which means that which causes movement of blood etc excessively so it's a disease so here even though the causative affix nich has not been explicitly used it is implied in the verbal root we would not have been able to form this word ati saraha using the sutram itself because that's only says thire kartari this is not in that meaning so that is why the vartikam is necessary one more point to note here is the dirgha desha ati saraha upasarga is ati but we have become ati saraha that's a sutram which we will study later it's 63122 upasargasya ghaiya manushye bahulam ghaiya manushye bahulam sutram we will study later on we, can, we don't have to go into that in detail right now so that is why it's become ati saraha now the next example is in the case of a fish is vividham sarati ti visaro matsya one who moves about variously 
here and there is a fish it's a kind of fish which uh, moves about variously so that is straightforward meaning vividam sarati visaraha matsya it's a kind of fish again here we could not have used the sutra itself because it's a different meaning than a stable agent now the last meaning is sarayati cheshtayati iti saraha balam atrapi sridhatu rantar bhavit nyarthah which means here also there is an implied causation in the verbal root itself do the do the affix the causative affix which has not been explicitly used is implied in the verbal root itself in this meaning so what is balam it is saraha balam means that which makes someone active makes someone move so that is called strength because of strength that is the strength which makes someone active so sarayati cheshtayati iti saraha balam so this, these are the three meanings which the vartikam allows the affix ghing to be used following this verbal root so vartikam extends this sutram allows us to use this affix ghing to derive these three words in the sense of disease a kind of fish and strength